Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to the Ron Lyon Report. Leading up to the Puerto Rico Pro tomorrow, I want to present to you my favorite for the 212 class, all the way from Tennessee. Please welcome Bo Lewis. How are you, Bo? I'm doing good. How are you doing, big brother? Good, good. Now, um, you were just talking, man. I haven't heard much from you. You've been doing that working and silencing like Dorian, which is very uncommon these days. These days, usually everybody's putting out a thousand videos and pictures a day and talking about this show and that show they're going to win. Um, so you've just had your head down. So what's been going on with you since the last time I saw you on stage was Tampa, where I know you were a little disappointed. You were hoping to win that, but I uh, had to take third place between Kareth Bajo and Ahmad El Sadani. And I think that lit a fuse, that lit a, a spark under your butt, because I bet you've been working much, much harder ever since that day, have you? Yeah, you know, I, I didn't like how I placed, you know, I know I could have came in a little better, but, you know, what happened, what happened, that was a lesson learned for me, and I don't want that to happen again. Yeah, because, I mean, let's uh, let's go through. You've only, from, from what I can see here, you've done five pro shows, so correct me if I'm wrong. 2019, this Puerto Rico Pro was your pro debut in 2019. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And you were second place to Eduardo Correa, who is legend of the 202 and 212 class, second place at the Olympia. Um, yeah. You won the New York Pro in 2020. Uh, second place to Tampa to the late George, the Bull Peterson, George Peterson III. And, and the it, great, the great George Peterson. He was a great 212. I mean, yeah, gone way too soon. And I think he could have been possibly Olympia champion had he kept going. Um, so then you did the Olympia that year too. You go, you made your way to the Olympia. So you've been on the Olymp Mr. Olympia stage and then mm -hmm. Tampa. So, uh, you know, after the Tampa show last year, what, what were the things you wanted to focus on? Because you're always trying to improve. Every time I see you on stage, you brought up something. You're a little better than you were last time. Yeah, yeah. it was like my shoulder still wasn't up to par to, you know, that shoulder to waist ratio and mm -hmm. i would I, I really wasn't satisfied with that and i'm i had to go back and look at some pictures and stuff i'm like well my condition i didn't come in good condition at all some people say it was but when you look at yourself and you got good guys like you around that's yeah. that's gonna tell you straight up hey that ain't it yeah. that ain't it and i know that when it's so you know i just put my head down and i was like well i can go do Texas next week or, or whatever and, and uh, see what's going on with that. But it'll be the same results. I, I I wouldn't have had time to improve from Tampa to the Olympia because it was so close. And I'm like, nah, is it worth just going to place uh, 10th, 9th, uh, 8th or whatever? Nah, forget that mess. I just said, <laughs> I, I take some time off and really go with it and see what I can bring up. But I really didn't take no time off. I probably took maybe three, four days after the gym, right after uh, Tampa. Hmm. Wow. So back to work right away. Yeah. So yeah. Where in a, you're in the Tennessee area. I know you've been training at Brandon's gyms, sometimes Carbon Culture USA. What's your main gym? Where do you train most of the time in Nashville? I train at Iron Fit uh, Gym in Nashville. It's a new gym by uh, my sponsor. Uh, Fit Supplements, he got a gym. He just opened. Oh, right got a name, uh, Patrick Newmiller. Good, good, good dude. Yeah. He helped me out a whole lot up there. Okay. He got all Arsenal equipment in there, and I'm talking about this nice gym. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen so much Arsenal gym equipment as I have in these Tennessee area gyms for some reason. Yeah, it, they <laughs> love it down here. I th are, they, are they in? I think they're in Tennessee Arsenal. Is that why? Yeah. yeah. So the shipping costs are a little cheaper probably than <laughs> getting them all yeah. across the country. So shoulder to waist ratio. Yeah. How do you do that? Because a lot of that's just structure and you do have a good bone structure. You wouldn't be where you are right now. So what were you, were you trying to get the shoulders wider, rounder? What have you been doing to make that happen? I've been uh, trying to round it off. You know, my real deal was like, my real deal was weak. I, it ain't no doubt about it, you know, mm -hmm. and I needed to cap my, uh, side laterals off a little more so my front my fronts was good cause from heavy benching and all that these years so I just got with uh my guy Tony Haynes and told him look hey I got to change some things up I said don't take it easy I don't, I don't want nothing easy send me something good and he sent me something good and I'm talking about 
it, it helped me out. My rear disc is way improved now. My side ladders round off, and you go, you well, the pitch is out there right now, so it, it's so. <laughs> yeah, what, let's remind everyone what is your Instagram? ILBB Pro underscore Bo Lewis, where Bo underscore Lewis. A lot of underscores these days. Yeah. But, um, yeah, rear delts, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a weak point for so many people because, you know, it's, it's typically they'll do it like at the very end of a shoulder workout or the very end of a back workout. Did you start doing it earlier in some workout to prioritize it? Yeah, I, I start off like my uh, rear delt maybe sometimes be like my second uh, workout. Okay. I do, I do two of them. I do one probably my second, then I switch up. Then I come back and hit it again, maybe like right before my last uh, set. So I don't want a lot. Of, I don't understand why, but you know, I, I used to do it also. We we put real deals last, just like we want to put calf last. And, yeah. You know, no, nah, forget that. I can go and do that right now and get it out. Well, not just get it out of the way, but go and blast them and make them rounder yeah. and get them full of blood. So that's what I started doing. Yeah, because you know you were like you said you were we you were a bench press champion. You were were you powerlifting before bodybuilding? I seem to remember. Yeah, yeah. Remind everybody how much you bench press at what body weight at your best. Uh, I bench like five or twenty foot twenty five twenty five five thirty at one time, but I was almost probably about two hundred fifty pounds. Wow, yeah, that's that's a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah. So, I feel like this might be a year to, to try to get some redemption on these shows because Puerto Rico Pro, I'm sure for the last three years, you've wanted to come back and win that show because second place, you know, Flex Wheeler told me once, that's like the worst place because you're so close and you're standing there with that one other guy and you want them to call your name for winner and they call the other guys. He's like, that's the worst. So that, and I bet, I even if you win this, would you go to Tampa just to win that because you, you got second place there too? You know, Tampa ain't on my mind now. I'm talking about Tampa really is bothering me, Ron. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I'm talking about this one show that when I first started bodybuilding, this one show I said I wanted to win. I really wanted to win. Mm -hmm. And it's bothering me. So, yeah, it, me and Andrew going to have to think about some things because I, I I really do want Tampa. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's this argument happened last year with Ian Valier because he won – he won Tampa and then he went and won Texas the next week. And a lot of people got mad at him because they say, Hey, you just took an Olympia qualification away from somebody. And he's like, you know what? Screw that. If they can't beat me, they don't deserve to go to the Olympia. I'm a pro bodybuilder. I compete and I win and I make money. And that's, this is what I do. Why would you tell me not to do a show? You know, do you, is that how you feel? Or would you feel like, Oh no, I better, I better not do any more shows. So somebody else can go to the Olympia. Hey, you can't, if you can't beat me, you can't beat me. You know, hey, plus I gas costs out here. And I'd like to drive. So ah. I got to win me some gas money. Oh man. So you know, if I if, if I decide to do Chicago, I jump in Chicago. Do them all, man. Why not? Hey, why not? Milos did it. All those the old school guys, they didn't say, oh. okay, I want a show, I better stop. They they were, you know, it's like why, why? people got to understand, look at look at how Kevin LeBron is got famous. Yeah. Kevin won every Grand Prix there was. Yeah. Yeah. But not just because he was big or whatever. Kevin was the best. Yeah. So why not take off the name as bodybuilders and do what they did? If I got if I think my body can hold up and I can uh sit back at least a couple months to get a good rest in, I'll be all right. Yeah. But if I feel like going doing like I said Chicago and Tampa, why not? Right. Hey, that's money in the bank. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if like you said, if they can't beat you, they can't beat you. So, no. you know, this isn't like a participation trophy type of sport where everybody should get a trophy, everybody should win. No, it's the best of the best. You're all trying to beat each other. So uh, I'm with you. I, I love to see guys just keep competing. And if you're beating them, oh, well, you know, that they need to get better so they can beat you. That's all there is to it. Yeah. You know, don't cry. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so those who follow your Instagram know you're always asking like opinions on posing trunks. Do you actually take opinions from people? Like, do you like these? Cause I think you've shown how many different pair, you must have like 20 different pair of posing trunks. And you're always asking people you like this one or that one. So do you take yeah. like, do you take the input, the feedback from these people? 
Yeah, I listen. I listen to my fans. You know, I try to interact with my fans all the time. I don't want to be one of them pros, Ron, that don't don't talk to the people. Cause some pros, you know, I, I don't, I ain't gonna put no names out there, but you know how these pros is. They got the big head. They don't want to answer their fans and this and that. No, not me. I'm gonna actually listen to the people. And I went back and looked at a lot of things. So I, I got maybe like four different pair, four or five different pair in there that they done see it, that they wanted to see it. And we gonna, whichever one I reach in the bag, <laughs> out, okay, that's prejudged, and then they go to the finals, you know? Because I mean, you usually people figure out, well, this is my hair color, my eye color, my skin tone. This color looks the best on me. Have you ever just decided red or blue or some color that you're gonna stick with because that you figured out that looks best on you? No, not really. Like sometimes when I get rid of like for the soap, that's why I got so many because I'm, I'm sponsored by uh I can the bikinis. You see it oh. got me got, got my sugar daddy shirt right here. <laughs> I'm sponsored by I can the bikini. Her name is Angela and I just call her and be like, what you think? And she'll just I tell her, whatever pair you pick out, that's what I wear. And she always picks out good colors for me. Oh, sugar daddy, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I'm curious if you ever got any chance to train with Brandon Curry anymore. I know you got some good workouts in with him before. Have you been able to train with him anymore? Not this time. Brandon been busy. You know, I, Brandon got them balls, man. I'm talking about some real athletes, and I, I see what he's doing out there. He bringing them balls in, right? So you know, I right, mean, Brandon time gonna come. Me and Brandon talk about some more things that might happen. Right. Hopefully. Okay. I ain't going to talk about it just yet, but hopefully this right here can happen for us. No, oh, right on. Okay. Well, I guess you'll, you'll tell us when the time is right. So, you know, uh, this Puerto Rico pro, I don't think they've had it for a couple, am I right? They, they had it last year, but I think they skipped 2020. So you didn't get a chance to do it. Um, is it, it's, it's a, it's a tropical environment. Where, where was it? It was in Puerto Rico when you did it, right? Yeah. Then, you know, COVID hit for 20, uh, what it was, mm -hmm. 2020. Yeah, so they, they didn't have, have it 2020 because I was planning on doing it then. Yeah. Then they had it last year, but it was in the Bahamas. Right. Yeah. So I mean, now it's, it's back it, here at the same place. Yeah. So you can win the Puerto Rico Pro in Puerto Rico this time. Yeah. When you, you won New York Pro, it was Tampa, I believe, right? Yep. And Chicago Pro for the past like couple years has been in Atlanta. So yeah. This year, if you do it, it's actually going to be in Illinois. So it's, mm -hmm. it's such a relief to get things back in the places they're supposed to be because it was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are all great cities, but I'm in Atlanta and I'm at the Chicago Pro. It just didn't. I'm in a Tampa for the New York Pro. Man, it didn't make any sense. Uh, I've got to ask you, what do you think about the future of the 212 division? Because we have your champion right now, Derek Lunsford. A lot of people think he's going to move to open this year. Sean Clarita is qualified for the Mr. Olympia. He could choose to do that instead of the 212. Uh, you know, you're you've been you're you're still a very new athlete in the 212 division. You've only done a few shows. You've only been a pro for a couple of years, really. Is the 212 really where you feel your home is, or someday do you feel like maybe you'd want to move to open too, or at least try some open shows? Yeah, you. I, I, I've been talking about it, like seeing how my body responds and. I, I see how my body looked when I was like 240, 245. Hmm. And I was looking like an open bodybuilder then. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, if I could translate 240 maybe to 250, then pull it back between 220, 225, yeah. and see how I look right there. Yeah, I do. I, I love to do an open show. Yeah. So you're coached by Andrew Vu, who's very, very knowledgeable. You've had this conversation with him, I'm sure. What does he think about that? Oh, you boo, boo with whatever. You know, I got confidence in boo about if I say I want to do an open show, I got I, I got confidence in him that he'll bring me in right where I need to be at. Because yeah. he, he really understanding my body a whole lot now. Like for this prep right here, you know, I stayed at, well, I came down to 2.30 all the way out, probably the four weeks out from the show. Wow. Yeah, and I'm talking about it was it was a good thing right there. Yeah. So is this is it going to be you? You probably added some good muscle mass since you know last summer. Is it going to be a little a little tougher? I'm sure you'll still get to 212, but is it think it's going to be more of a challenge to make weight this time? No, it's it's, it's it, it'd be cool for me to make weight. 
you know, I got, I don't have re really no problem making weight. Yeah. I just hold water a little bit, but other than that, I make weight. Yeah. You know, which is puts you in a good spot because I've talked to so many of these guys in classic and 212 that it's really hard for them to get to that weight. And then they're always stressed out about how much time do I have between weigh-in and judging? Am I going to have enough time to fill out again? You know, they're like, oh crap, the weigh-in's uh, that morning or it's, a, it's the night before. And they want it to be like two or three days so then they can weigh in at 212 and get on stage at like 220 or something. But, you know, guys like, it seems like, what, what'd, you weigh, what'd you weigh in last year at Tampa? Do you remember? Oh, uh, I think I was probably about 207. Okay. So that's, I think it's an ideal spot because you don't have to have that whole mental, mental no, struggle I'm, messing with your head the whole time. I, like right now, I'm good right now. And I'm talking about, I, I ain't going to have no problem making weight. Yeah. And see, you, you can still eat food. You can still drink a little water if you want to, I'm sure, right? It's like, yeah. I'm sure you talked to other guys in 212. They said, I couldn't eat anything the last 48 hours before weighing. I couldn't drink anything. You know, uh, any human being would be incredibly uncomfortable in a situation like that. But this is an athlete with all this muscle mass going all that time without eating or drinking, it's scary to even think about. It. Yeah. But you, go, you know, sometimes run, uh, some of these guys be ahead of themselves. You know, they, they, everybody want to be so big. I want to be big. Yeah. That then you understand being big don't always win no show. Well, big and full you're is big. great, but if you're not yeah, in shape. Yeah. I'm, I'm full. Yeah, you fool, but you out of shape. <laughs> yeah, that's called second or third call out when you look like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're and then wonder why. No, you ain't putting in the work. You, you ready to sit back there and eat all day or whatever. <laughs> and oh, I, I want a burger and fries. Sometimes you can't have that burger and fries. Mm, yeah. Oh, you got to understand what's going on with your body. Me, I ain't, I don't be worried. I ain't had a cheat meal in 10 months. Wow. See, I think, uh, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, Kevin Leveroni was one of your early mentors when you were first term pro. And he didn't have cheat meals. I believe I, I remember him telling me like the last six weeks before a show, every meal was like uh, fish and spinach or something, fish and broccoli, no carbs. He went carb, no cheat meals, no refeeds. Uh, and conditioning was, you know, that in the nineties, you know, I hate to, I don't want to sound like that old cranky guy. Oh, wow, the nineties was better, but conditioning on, on average was better because the guys weren't trying to be all big and full. They didn't worry about that. No, and, you know, I, I, I think that mindset is, is doing you a, a good service because like you said, big and full is great, but without condition, it means absolutely nothing on stage. No, you know, that's where I come. I'm, I'm, I'm from the night. A lot of people, you look at me, a lot of people be thinking I'm young. No, I've been around. <laughs> I've been watching this sport for so long. I got magazines from back in the eighties and you know, yeah. and Hey, I've been watching this stuff. Name is to me. Yeah. They had that look. You could take anybody from their top 10 back in the 90s and put them on stage right now and watch what happened. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think to your credit, uh, you know, Josh Wade is one in, in the open is the one of the only, he's the only guy who turned pro as a master's who ended up doing pretty well in the in open bodybuilding in, in the IPB Pro League. But you, you turned pro in 2018 at the Universe, correct? Yeah. Were you already 40 at that time? Yeah. I won the 35. Uh, light heavyweight and the overall, and I want a 40 light heavyweight and the overall. So that would make you 44 this year? Yep. Yeah, look at turn. Let me, there's not one wrinkle there. <laughs> look at all that Botox and filler. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it right now, black don't crack. Because, geez, <laughs> you, could pass, you could pass for, you know, 33 to 35, I think, pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate are, that. Are people surprised at, at when you tell them uh, your actual age? Yeah, a lot of people think I'm in my early 30s, but then they'll be like, your voice throw me off, though. Your voice <laughs> kind of make it yeah. to where you do sound older. Did, didn't you have this voice your entire adult life, or has it gotten deeper as you've gotten older? No, I, I had it my whole life. Oh. <laughs> I can imagine an 18-year-old kid on the phone with that voice. You know, that, that you'd think that's a 40-year-old man or some grown-ass man. Man, that's hilarious. Yeah, because I mean, you didn't start competing until you were how old? 30 and what I was. So if you turned pro in 2018, I don't know how long you've been competing before that. I don't think it was long. 2018, yes, I, I, I competed. I started 
turn it back. My, well, my first show was in 2017. Wow. I turned, I turned pro in less than a year of me starting competing. Wow. So you didn't start competing until you're almost 40. Yeah, I think I was 38 or 39 when I started. Wow. So you're very young in the sport. And, you know, your body, there's guys your age have been in the, uh, in, in the pros who are, their bodies are thrashed because they've com been competing for 20 years, 25 years. You know, every time you prep for a show, I think it takes a little bit out of you. It's a very, mm -hmm. it's a brutal process for anybody that's gone through it, but yeah. you're still, you're still young and fresh. I mean, injury free, right? Yeah. Injury free. Yeah. So, I mean, you're like uh, uh, 44 years old in the body of a 24 year old, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I turned pro natural, bro. Did you really? Yeah. I turned pro natural. Wow. I don't think you've ever told me that before. Yeah. You know, sometimes, Hey, gotta, gotta save it for the next interview. Comment section below. He's full of shit. I guarantee you. There's no way you can't turn pro natural. Yeah, because I mean, you know, you were never you were a big guy, big strong guy long before you started competing, correct? Yeah, I was. Uh, when I first started competing, I was 250 pounds. Wow. Because I just all I did was eat and lift heavy. That's it. Yeah. But I didn't have no legs though. But I I can I was squatting. I'm talking about with the best of them. Mm, that's right but then you start doing more reps and you know different change up your leg training and now you got legs i yeah. remember you know you were asking me a few years ago what to build and i said dude your upper body's crazy but those legs they just don't match and now they've come up so much you know you've been putting in a lot of work and it shows it really shows yeah i appreciate that i, I, I had to sit back and look at you know i look i look and, and look oh uh, well guys like david longsford Son Clarita, even Kamal. Kamal ain't got the biggest legs out there, yeah. but he got good developed legs. Yeah. And that that boy matters. So I'm looking at them guys' legs. I'm like, okay. And like I saw, uh, uh, Lucas. Lucas got good legs. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at them guys' legs and, okay, I, I look at Keon. I, I got to bring my legs up. Yeah. I can't stand next to these guys and they got good legs and I'm okay. All right, legs. I'll, I'm, I'm looking at a spot where I don't want to be it. So yeah. I'm nah, let me let me revamp this and got with Tony Haynes and he put some workouts together for me and there go my legs. Yeah. I'm lifting heavier with good form, but I'm controlling the weight a whole lot more, not just running through the reps. Yeah. You know, and that had to be a tough adjustment because you came from a like a weightlifting background, a guy who just loved lifting heavy, heavy weights. You know, that was that was it for you was how much weight can I lift? I'm sure for a long time yeah. you, you got big anyway. But then once you shifted and now you're really training the muscle, now your physique is you know, it's like night and day. I'm sure if you look at yeah. pictures of you 10 years ago, you look nothing like this. Nothing. No, nothing at all. I, I go back and, and put like collages together all the time. And I'd be like, man, what was going on in my mind? Yeah. I guess I like the, the windy burgers and stuff like that a lot. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, fast foods, uh, it's delicious. It's convenient. But man, yeah, so no cheat meals for 10 months, man. That is crazy. We're learning a lot about you today, Bo. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I get that switch and that switch go off in my mind run. I, 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 I close down. Yeah. I don't want it no more. So I remember after the New York Pro, you had you were eating pizza in the lobby. We were all having trouble getting food, I remember. It was like a, that was like right, the COVID was a pandemic was raging and it was like pain in the ass to get anything. But pizza was your go-to. Is do you, would you have a pizza if you win this thing? Puerto Rico? I don't know. I don't know what kind of pizza they have in Puerto Rico. Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> you well, they, you know, they use different sauces here. Oh, okay. Because I, I still remember back when 2019 I came and I went had a pizza and it was the sauce is a little bit different here. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I assume they eat pizza everywhere in the world. It's delicious, but that's a good, that's a good thing. I know <laughs> I'm talking about what you're going to eat after the show. Like that's the most important thing. But uh, so man, you know, I looked over the lineup and th there was a couple good guys, but you're my favorite right now. Yeah. I'm not going to jinx anything, but I believe in you. I know what you're capable of. I know what your physique looks like. If it's in shape and you've made any kind of improvements, you know, I think you've got an incredible chance at winning this, this Puerto Rico pro. So I'd love to see you win this. I'd love to see you come down to Tampa, you know, in a few weeks and win that too. Why not? Just, you know, unfinished business is I feel like, you know, whenever you take yeah. second place. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I got the, 
Carrot placed the head of me twice already, and I, I don't like it. He know he, he getting he getting to me, cause yeah. he did uh Tampa when I first turned pro. That was my first show, Tampa. Oh okay. I knew my body wasn't ready, but I still did it. And he he finished like third, I think third or fourth. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he come back and do it last year. He beat me so. So when you did that the first time, would you been a pro for like a week or two? It was probably about two, I think about two weeks, wasn't it? It was quick. I remember I was like, geez, this guy's already competing. He just turned pro. Yeah. He just turned pro. But, you know, that's nothing wrong with that. I remember Derek Lunsford won the USA in 2017. Very next weekend, he went to Tampa and he won his first pro show there. So, uh, like I said, if you got your pro card, go ahead and use it. Why not? Yeah, I I, I I can't do like, I ain't want to do like a lot of people. I'm going to take some time off. No, first of all, go jump in the show and see how people look. That way you can make your adjustment. If you're sitting back waiting and you ain't never been to a pro show, you don't know what you're going up against. Right. So that was my mind frame. So when I went, I said, well, I got 11 my first show. Mm. I said, that'll never happen again. And it never did. So, <laughs> no, and I, I came back to Puerto Rico and Stand next to the great yeah. Super Slice, and he he beat me at Puerto Rico. Yeah, there's no shame in losing Eduardo. He's a legend. Nah, He's if, if you shame about losing to Eduardo, then yeah. something wrong with you. It's like losing to Flex Lewis or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it happened to a lot of people. So, man, uh, anybody you need to thank before you, before I let you go? Yeah, well, uh, thank uh, I Candy Bikini, I'm Fit, oh. Uh, Tony Haynes and Celsius, Northern Chill. Man, thank God. Yeah. All right. Most of, most of all. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't be here without him. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank <laughs> the lead. Thank you. And thank y'all for having me on. Must the Oh, you're very welcome, Bo. You're very welcome. You know, like I said, I, I always respect hard work. People that get on their grind and they don't just every time, you know. Some guys, when they lose a show, they'll start posting pictures and say, ah, I was robbed. And this, and they'll post pictures. You, this guy shouldn't have beat me. You know, that, that's, that's not a winning attitude. A winner just, if he gets beat, goes back to work, says, I'm, I got to get so good that they can't beat me next time. They, mm -hmm. they, they, I got to be so good that they have to give me first place. There's not going to be a choice. Yeah. You know, and that, that's you. Yeah. That, that's how your mind seems to work. So, you know, I, 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 I seen something the other day that this is what really got to me. Like, they was talking about running Kobe. Hmm. When he stepped on stage in 2003, pre-judging, that he didn't even have to pose and they already knew the game was over. Yeah, I was there, I was there. That's was crazy. crazy. That right there run through my mind. Yeah, yeah, in so, fact, it was, people were actually laughing because they couldn't believe how great he looked, how big and full and it was just, we had never seen anything like that, a human being. Yeah. He said an entirely new. That was the year he was like two ninety six, I think, right? And was nasty. It was crazy, and yeah. As soon as he walked out, it was like, "All right, we're done. We're done. Let's see who's going to take second now." <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I want them to be looking like when we get back here on backstage yeah. at Puerto Rico. Cool. Well, who going to be fighting for second? Yeah. Well, we're going to find out very soon. So this is going to be posted. We're recording this on a Thursday morning, but you're. We're going to post it Friday. You're going to be on stage Saturday. Your show is all done. Your portion is all done Saturday. Uh, 3 o'clock and 6.30 p.m. And you're judging in finals. So we don't have long to wait. You know, I know it's going to feel like a million years to you, but uh, it's, it's going to go by like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for it. Well, boy, I wish you the very best of luck. Uh, you have all the tools. You have a very strong attitude, uh, great work ethic. I want to see you get rewarded for it. We'll see what happens right there in San Juan, Puerto Rico at the Puerto Rico Pro. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for taking the time. You know, uh, best of luck over these next two days, peaking perfectly. I know you got Andrew uh, guiding you. Everything's going to be cool. You're going to be fine. So that's it. Uh, everybody, thanks for watching Ron Line Report with this man, Bo Lewis. You'll see yes, him on sir. stage, Puerto Rico Pro in the 212 division, looking for the win. So that's it. Thanks, Bo. And thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time.